uh, my talk is titled War on GDB. GDB here stands for new debug. Uh, more because I tried to give a similar talk uh, last year here at Fortin. So I tried to extend it a bit uh, and make it more useful. Uh, because the rest uh, is for my field DBAs. It's a bit strange. DBA in work in production should not do debugging and are not expected to do debugging with a live mic here. But sometimes it helps. So let me proceed. Uh, uh, I started to work on MySQL as support engineer 10 and a half years ago in MySQL. I'm still doing that. Just a couple of days ago I left the corner where I spent the past three years. Uh, I'm doing support and all this time I'm also working on bugs in MySQL. This is how I ended up with talks like that. And uh, that's why you will see bug numbers too often on these slides. Not so many slides, but they will be full of bug numbers. This is how I think about my scale in terms of bugs, mostly. Uh, that's it. Uh, you can see uh, some links also to uh, other sites and resources I'm interested in and where you can find me. Uh, I write about bugs, I speculate about bugs, I verify bugs, I report bugs. So, uh, that's how, how it starts. And I just would like to say that uh, one of the most important information resources related to MySQL is uh, public bugs database. Because it contains not only bad things explained there, but it also contains a workaround, solutions, quotes from the manuals, extensions to the manuals, and everything. So if you will get a habit to deal with every MySQL related problems by searching bugs database among other resources, you will resolve your problems faster. So uh, it, it was not my invention uh, by all means to uh, try to attach to, to MySQL D to the running process and get something useful uh, with a debug. We work on open source software, so we have access to the source code. So whenever we need to understand MySQL, or whenever we need to study some problem, we can go directly to the source. Uh, debug, whatever, GDB is just the most widely used example, uh, as we mostly use MySQL now on Linux, first of all, it's nature. So, uh, debug just helps study code in a more interactive way. Uh, I will present some history. Who started that? How it started? What people? Uh, what crazy things people started to do with debugger and why? I will present some names. Some of these studies ended up with separate tools of them. Uh, PTPMP or Core Managed Profiler by Domus is the most widely known, and it's now a part of the production ready performer toolkit that is widely used. Uh, and I will just show how it works. You know, in a few examples what part of the code you need to study, how you can do that, and few GDP formats that will be of the most in, in the process. Uh, I also added, comparing to last year, a couple of things uh, that I recently uh, was working on using GDP, specifically studying how working works in MySQL. Because you can read the manual, you can get a lot of formats at uh, test your level to see that. But depending on version, you may not have all uh, things covered. And depending on how fast you are typing, you may not be able to catch up all the steps. <coughs> GDB is a unique tool, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, to find out how exactly working happens in sequence, in what order. And that helps to then explain production problems like debug or handling sessions or whatever. So that's it. Uh, Naturally, debugger was first used by developers. I just give you a couple of examples. Uh, as a support engineer, we usually came to developers with a problem like, you know, uh, uh, my skill is crashing at customer side. Uh, uh, customer does not uh, uh, know how it happens. Uh, they do not have anything useful in their world. What they have, they have a core dump. So can you please check the core dump and find out something? So we had to provide uh, the binary the crash in binary, maybe the new library for it, and uh, the call, and got the magic out of developers. So they say, you know, it was this SQL statement. How to do that? I don't know. Check bug numbers, you will see what magic developers can do. For example, studying cores. They also surely 
use GDB as one of the tools in the usual tool chain when they debug their own code, they can use it as an interactive tool as well. And then I just would like to show you the example of what you can do with GDB. You can run your software under GDB. So you uh, compose a command line starting with GDB, you pass arguments, and for example, this is the way to run MySQL chat under GDB. And then you can uh, set breakpoints, watch points, uh, run it step by step, whatever. So this is how developers use it. And once again, I just would like to, uh, in other cases, uh, another option how to use it is to attach it to already running MySQL. So you, you can uh, put uh, MySQL server into some problematic state if you know how. And then you can study from that position. So running step by step in GDB will take you a year. So you can just attach it at the right moment. Again, just a couple of recent examples. What magic developers can do it was a huge problem, for example, in MySQL resolved eventually completely by Oracle, by the way, uh, that uh, you are able to use save points into here, but that uh, it broken up all kinds of replication, error replication, binary logs, and everything. Uh, and still, uh, the comments were supported. So just take a look, or all links are clickable on slides, check how many states you are needed. Another option, uh, yet another my colleague from, from the opponent uh, who works in support. Nikolai spent some time clearly by a couple of comments comparing variables in GDP, and he was able to pinpoint why specifically the crash happened in one uh, quite a complicated case. So no doubts, <laughs> developers use GDP and can get a good use of it. What about DBAs? So DBAs, it's important uh, that GDB allows you to get something useful out of the MySQLD binary that otherwise you cannot even access. So uh, you may not be able to connect to MySQLD with uh, any clean. You cannot open the connection. Maybe you hit max, max connection, it's legal. Maybe your server is overloaded, but the process is there. It's in some state, you just cannot get it. Here comes DDB. You can attach it, and as soon as you know which variables are there at the global level, or you know which threads are there, you can take a look. You can switch from thread to thread what local variables are used in each and every function. You open the code uh, snippets uh, just in another window, study the code, try to guess, find out, remember, write down, get prepared. So you do it already when my skill D is handled. I mean, it's, it's not bad, it's, it's possible for production DBAs. What options you have? You can collect some final evidence before restarting it, or you can just restart it. Restart and move on, restart and move on. You do it every day, many times. It's typical for, 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 for DBAs, but when you restart it and start to understand there is some trend, it fails to open, there is uh, a reason to do something else. And that can be attaching GDB and check. So GDB basically allows you to check values in memory of uh, MySQLD or any other project, if you know the code. Moreover, it allows you to change values. Uh, that you may not be able to change otherwise because you cannot connect or because uh, we are speaking about the read only variable, some limitation in MySQL or whatever. And surely GDB can be used by DBAs as well uh, to study evidence later. So all you should do, uh, probably if you are going to find the root cause of each and every cr crash, the minimal thing you should do, you should make sure that you have core lines say, and then you can spend your time in GDB on them later. We start fast move production uh, to, to, to in order fast, by, but study evidence later. So that's, that's it. Uh, initially, uh, the new approach, or absolutely unthinkable approach, is to use GDP to change weight. It needs some, some training. And initially, uh, at least from my understanding, these tricks were implemented and widely used by a uh, well-known uh, MySQL guy, a big guy in MySQL, who is now in Facebook, Thomas Mitu. So he, he, he used all kinds of tools. So as soon as he worked on, on macros or on Solaris, he used D-Trace. When he uh, worked on Linux, uh, Linux and there was no D-Trace at the moment, or was no completed implementation, he had to use GDB. He used all kinds of tools. So uh, he started with uh, various comments like, what if I need to uh, add, for example, a replication field for slave without restarting? Or what if I would like to uh, enable log slave updates? 
it requires flavor starts, but I cannot effort that in production. What if I uh, would like to disable really head at MySQL level because it kills performance, it requires restart. So he studied the code and did all the tricks. But he was really famous for poor match profiler that started just with a simple idea. Let's do a backtrace for each thread. You see what it does. Where is it now and how it comes? When you do it many times for the same thread, you may find some trend. Like it's handy, the same call stack all the time. Or all, all threads are handy in similar stack threads. So he, he just written a script, and, uh, a combination of uh, AWK and Shell to uh, analyze, summarize stack traces, remove specific over you know, thread numbers or whatever, and count similar traces. And this tool eventually uh, ended up with a separate site, it was a bit improved, rewritten, options added, and it's now a poor man's profiler, PTPMP, that you surely have to uh, try to run whenever you see your MySQL D hangs and, and plan to restart. Even if you do not have core dump uh, enabled, no need to kill or provoke killing. You can shut it down cleanly if it requires to your home. But before that, get the stack trace, get them aggregated at least. If you, or you can do it in GDB at once. But getting them aggregated will give you extra information because it's state in progress or in no process. That's great. There are other examples. Uh, for this slide, I'd like to concentrate on the following. Initially, 10 years ago, it was like a black magic, as I explained to any developer. An experienced engineer could give you a question as clear from your core dump that he was just able to all the SQL that was executed at the moment of hash, because sometimes the crash session cannot explain anything. You repeat the same uh, SQL and you do not get the crash. It should happen in specific state and situation. So uh, uh, there are several uh, articles listed there, and you should remember names of people like Shane Bester and Roland Depart, who is now leading QA in performance, that made uh, like entire business cases out of getting SQL on the core dump. So they created tools and approaches around GDB to help you to get all the SQL statements that you had at the moment of crash. And this is a, a basis of QA efforts in Performa right now. So they had all kinds of code until they see crash, and when they get crash, they get a core dump, and when they get a core dump, they automated the process. They can reduce and build repeatable test case. So now, if you ask me, most of the QA efforts uh, in my scale land uh, are lead by performer using this specific approach. So it's like servers working 24 hours per day, uh, running all kinds of crazy generated uh, commons that maybe even do not make sense, and eventually hitting goblins, crashing server, hitting possessions if it's debugging uh, version, or just crashing the DBL. So remember the names, and you can easily Google for more links. So these links I just suggested to try. So if you are just uh, MySQL DB, what you can do with GDB, uh, basic commands are quite simple. First one that you should remember, thread reply all backtrace for BT. That's if you have a Hamilton server, if you do not have Perfona toolkit installed, no PT, PMP or anything, get at least a single snapshot. Uh, then, uh, if uh, uh, after you analyze that, you will see which threads, which numbers, what they do, are composing your MySQL data process state at the moment. You can switch to a specific thread and study its content. You can see how you get from thread creation to current state, which functions were important, which structures are important, and you can print the values of these structures. So the next comment you know is print, you simply P in short. Then the command you should know if you are going to your GDB and change something is set form. You can change the value of any variable. It can be a global variable, and you have even help from GDB, like you press tab and it will give hints you like, like you have in shells. It will give you hints for, for, for variables out of completion and then lists of accessible variables as soon as you have symbol there. So you can change max connections on the fly, it's a global variable. You can change uh, log flavor dates on the fly, it's a global variable. Another more interesting thing, you can call functions from MySQL code in GDB. Like you change the way MySQL server works. 
uh, the function may do a set of complicated steps in a proper manner, in a proper order, unlike if you will set variables yourself or create some additional user variables yourself. So you can call functions. Uh, for, uh, as far as I understand, Thomas was, was one of the first to apply them to table replication filtering behavior. But now in 5.7, finally, it is dynamic. And that replication filter is dynamic. That is one of the final slides that we'll say about it. But GDD is actually for you when you hit limitation of MySQL. But eventually, when this limitation is being pointed, the OSP or coordinate may be called out and brought as a result. So you can work interactively, or you should, uh, in production, you should know how to apply patient. So you prepare in testing environment interactively, but then you should be ready in production for us patch points. Because when GDD is a patch, nothing happens. Because this is hot until you let it run. That's it. So uh, I will not say anything more about poor match profile. It's a great tool. Just check the number of bug reports. Uh, they, they are not the, the, the most recent. Uh, but there are still great examples, and as far as I remember, some of them are still uh, not involved. So where uh, PTP and PCAP? What you should remember, and um, you should know about GDB, in case of MySQL B, is the following. MySQL is written so that it's a single process that creates multiple threads. So you need to know how to debug multi-threading process. That's all. And actually, maybe a couple of comments are single build of what you need. So you have a process, it, it's composed of several threads, always. Some ground threads and user threads. In each thread, uh, you can switch to, uh, if you need to, to put yourself in that context, if you need to change some variable, as it's for this thread, or see the variable in this thread. You move to specific thread, you can see a sequence of calls, backtrace, and then you can move to each of these specific calls, uh, or frame by number, and see what was in this frame, if it's not usable for you. You see the function there, you can check the code, you can see all the local variables, you can try to get things out of it. And surely, if you know how to name complicated structures, you can directly get a query string, for example, for a specific thread that is a pointer, you get a query string, but it's a bit complicated, it's not like a string directly. There are several uh, uh, structures, uh, one and another, and you point out and you get a square. That's basically how people get a square, essentially. From, from, from any thread uh, that uh, they can get a thread structure if it was executed. You move to a specific frame, you get a script, that's it. I highlighted just several uh, items of, of, of thread structure. Surely, among uh, the first things in the code that you should check, you should find out, open, and study thread structure. It's huge. It's complicated. It's a class that is a descendant of other classes, it has substructures and everything. The more you know about it, the uh, better you can imagine what, what to do. But essentially, you can just take, get a question. A year ago, I got a question, how to find out what a uh, user really has executed specific code. It was it's like a stored procedure. What was the efficient user? Because you have a creator uh, and uh, a definer for procedure, procedure, but it may run as definer, uh, it may run as a code. So, it took like 10 minutes to find out. You just dump, you print the thread content, and eventually you grab for familiar items, try to guess, and you can see that, for example, in this specific case, the code was uh, executed as a root from local host, because the uh, uh, customer asked, who could run that? I cannot imagine, it's not possible. This user cannot log in, we disable it, but it was a stored procedure after that, that was created as a root. Uh, as we probably do not have that much time, uh, just, just a quick comment. So this is what happens with uh, core dump, a set of comments that you should have ready. If you would like to capture the momentary state with all the details uh, and uh, cannot effort scoring core dumps that can be many gigabytes in size, just get a backtrace from core dump, then you can throw it away. If you need to know how to create a core dump, there is a set of steps, as far as I remember, Ori had written a nice blog post, and Peter Weiss had written it as well. So make sure you follow this, because it, it matters, for example. For production MySQL D, not the testing one, it runs as root, so you should make sure that core dumps are created by root users, where they are stored, that are numbered by process ID, if you have to store several of them, so there are some small details. Uh, as for crash and bug, I have a small problem. <laughs> 
Un tā es un bābi arī tur kura jā arī būtu, un es fiksi nu fiksi nu kura, that's why I left it on this part. And you can double check. Because the crash and code that you can use to crash it, whatever my still be, is still good. But I've picked up, yes, another bug, so basically, Basically, this is how it works. I crashed my spill D based on finding of Procona QA, and that's what you have when you attach GDB. I just wanted to show how it looks like, and one important thing, the coffin is a problem. What you see, reading symbols from, reading symbols from. Uh, if uh, you, you are using uh, my spill D binary to doubt, you may get the problem. You cannot read symbols. So in case of the corner server, there is a separate package with symbolic information. In case of Oracle, it's included. In case of other vendor, I have not checked my IDG. So you should be ready. So you should make sure that if you attach GDB, you have symbolic information there. So I like that. Nothing special. Just a couple of slides about my business. And the process are like that. So, to attach to a live mice PLD, it's so still easy. I will just show you probably if it's a part of questions. So, uh, recently, during last year, I started, started to use GDB, not in production only, but when working on complicated working related problems. So, if you need to find out how working happens in mice PL, specifically if you speak about inner DB logs, it's easy. You need to read the code, yes or fine, by testing functions that are called when blocks are set. Specifically, in MDB, it's a lock table and block directory. Quite simple name, easy to guess. You set breakpoints, then uh, you let uh, GDB to continue, uh, so let, let, let it run. Then you run whatever SQL you want, and you will get breakpoints in GDB. You just get log it, get the log, and you will see in what sequence, in what order, which logs are requested. You cannot, you will see sometimes even lock names or lock modes resolved to symbols with symbolic information. If you cannot see, if you just numbers, okay, then you just go to the code and study it. Same applies to metadata logs. In 5.7, you can see metadata logs in performance schema table, but before 5.7, you have no visibility of what actually is locked on this. So that's easy. We found out there are a couple of candidates, first of all, MDL request, it's a class, in it, it's a member function, set breakpoint on it, and you will see every met metadata look request. You easily end up with uh, some conclusions, and I presented my conclusions here in form of blog posts, bug reports, uh, requests to include the manual, it's just a, a top of the iceberg. Recent ones that are not finished. So, to summarize, what you can do, surely you can study my scale better, Surely you can resolve some immediate limitations. Is GDB an ultimate answer? Well, ideally it isn't. So if you are resolving performance problems, you can start with poor man's profile. But eventually, because it doesn't have any time and information, just as an aggregated stack, you may have a need to use real profile to find where time is spent when something can be. So it can be easy, but slow performance is less easy, and uh, just stack traces may not help. Uh, if you are studying performance problem in production, attaching GDP is stopping each time to have a performance. Surely, if you have this information from performance schema and it's enabled, you should use it. You should run it at SQL level. And surely, uh, some forks like MyADB, for example, or 5.7 of MySQL nice allows you to study metadata forks in another way. But when you can, you just use GDP. This photo of me was taken. 10 years ago, when I like, attached GDB maybe for the first time in set, there is a path. So the path is open, it's somewhere far away where you may end up if you use GDB. Please do it, and when you hit the bug, when you see something that you cannot explain by the manual, report it at bugs, my skill code, or at whatever bug record that applies to the GDB or for my skill. Thank you very much.